Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you. And today's trail tip is about tonight. Because I'm going to show you how to find north at night. Now some of you are probably going to be watching this video thinking, well wait a minute, I learned how to do this in grade school science class. I don't need a remedial course on it. That's fine. X out, hit the, the back button, go find something else more productive to watch. Don't blame you one bit. But if you have never actually gone out and looked at the night sky to determine where north is, or you don't even know that it's possible, sadly there's people that don't know, it might be something that a lot of schools are not teaching anymore, of how to simply look at the sky and find north. Mankind has been using the stars for navigation ever since we set eyes on the sky. Whenever the first intelligent brain got behind a pair of eyes, we've looked for the sky and use them for all sorts of things. The sky that we look at today would be very familiar to Columbus, Magellan, the Egyptians that built the pyramids, the Polynesians as they spread across the Pacific. Humanity has always found comfort in the night sky. And be able to find north and use it as a navigation aid is such a simple and basic concept that everybody who spends any time out in the field and in the wilderness and then the wild, or on the high seas, should know how to do. Now, there's a couple of terms I want to uh, define here for you before we get into it, and one is the word asterism. An asterism is simply a group of stars in the sky. Not to be confused with a constellation. Yeah, all constellations are technically asterisms, but not all asterisms are constellations. The Pleiades, or Seven Sisters, be a good example. Small group of seven stars is an asterism. It's not a constellation. It is within a constellation. Orion's belt is another one. It's an asterism within the constellation of Orion. Another term I want to define for you is the North Celestial Pole. Not the North Terrestrial Pole where Santa has his uh, workshop, but the North Celestial Pole, which if you extended the axis that the Earth rotates into the heavens, into the night sky, the North Terrestrial Pole, that axis would be projected onto the North Celestial Pole. And if you see time-lapse photographs of a night sky, you will see the stars seemingly rotate around a single point in that photograph. That would be the North Celestial Pole if it was taken in the Northern Hemisphere. This works for the Northern Hemisphere, people on the north of the equator. If you're in the south, southern hemisphere, I've got a sister video I'll put a link to in the description below to show you how to do this exact same thing in the southern hemisphere. So with that said, let's put away our compass and put away our flashlight and we'll get started. I will say this. Don't just watch this video and think you got it down pat. The first opportunity you have to get out away from city lights and be able to see a night sky full of stars, definitely do so. It's sad that there are people who spend their entire lives who have never seen the glory that is the night sky. They're either living in an urban environment all their lives, they're too busy to actually look up, and sadly, there's so many people that spend their time looking down at their phone and twiddling their thumbs than looking up at the night sky and seeing one of the greatest views in heaven. So take some time and go out and look at the night sky and practice this. And because I'm not gonna just show you how to do this once, but I'm gonna to explain, to explain to you how it changes from year to year, from season to season, uh, how it changed during the, during the night, that the stars do not look the same all night long, they change. They do not look the same all year long, they change. Yes, they rotate back into the same position, either in every 24 hours or every year, but you have to understand that when you look up at the night sky, you're not always going to look at the same place. I also suggest that you do this so you get comfortable with looking at the night sky and you be able to, to identify these asterisms that we're going to be looking for in the night sky so you can readily identify them. I mean, I, I, I don't remember how old I was when I learned how to do this, but it is very comforting to know, even though I know which way is north, when I look up to what I know is the north, I see these asterisms and I can tell just like that. So that's what I want you to do is go out, spend some time in the field, out away from the city lights. If you're just traveling along, pull over to the side of the road and take a quick look at the night sky and see how quickly you can identify north. 
Do that again in three months, in six months, and nine months. At least those four times. So you get an idea of how the asterisms and the stars rotate in the sky. And so you'll be more comfortable. So if you ever actually need to do this, it's going to be second nature. So let's get started, shall we? On a clear night, lacking excessive light pollution, you can easily see thousands of stars. Some are brighter than others. Some have a distinct color. But what you want to look for is a set of seven stars that looks like this. Drawing lines between these seven stars, imagine an outline as shown here. This is an asterism commonly called the Big Dipper. Now, technically, the Big Dipper is not a proper constellation, but merely an asterism in the constellation called Ursa Major or the Great Bear. The Big Dipper gets its name because it resembles a long-handled ladle. But let's not go off on a tangent and get into the subjects of astronomy. Let's concentrate at the task at hand, and that's finding north in the night sky. Another asterism you'll need to identify is called the Little Dipper. And if you draw a line between the seven stars, you'll have this pattern. It, too, resembles a long-handled ladle. At the end of the handle of the Little Dipper is a star called Polaris. Polaris is sometimes referred to as the North Star due to its proximity to the North Celestial Pole. Now, in order for us to learn how to identify true north at night, we must be able to find Polaris in the night sky. And you'll have to apologize the curved horizon in these photographs because I'm simulating a very wide-angle lens and it almost gives you a fisheye look, so bear with me. It's common technique to use the stars in the Big Dipper as an aid as the Big Dipper is larger and has brighter stars than the Little Dipper and thus easier to find. Here are both asterisms shown in a simulated view of the night sky. Can you find the Big Dipper? How about the Little Dipper? If you need to, you can pause the video to give you more time. Here's the Big Dipper. And here's the Little Dipper. Now, it's important to understand that these asterisms will not always look like this and be in the same position in the night sky. Both the rotation of the Earth on its axis, as well as the Earth orbiting the Sun during the course of the year, will cause them to appear differently, depending on what time of night you're looking up, as well as what season of the year it is. Here is the night sky, shown at March at 10 p.m. Now, can you identify both asterisms? Again, you can pause the video if you need to, if you need more time. Here they are. Now at 10 p.m., just three months later, the night sky will appear like this. Again, can you find the two asterisms? You can see how, even at night, at the same time of night, the movement of the Earth on its course around the Sun changes how they appear in the sky, even though it's still the same time. Again, at 10 p.m., but in early August, they will look like this. Three months later, in December, again, at 10 p.m., they will appear like this. It's also important to understand that another factor that will influence how you see these asterisms is your latitude, or how far north from the equator you are. The further away from the equator you are, or closer to the Earth's North Pole, the higher in the sky they will appear. Here is how they would appear in the sky in northern Canada. Quite high above the horizon. However, in the southwest portion of the United States, this is what they might look like. Very low in the sky. Now, as you can see, and the, the Big Dipper is so low that one of the stars is actually below the horizon and can't be seen. In addition, local terrain may obstruct all or parts of these asterisms, so keep this in mind when you're actually out there looking for them. Here's the night sky from a latitude so far south that only the Little Dipper can be seen. At this latitude and at this time, the Big Dipper is completely obscured by the local terrain. Here's the Little Dipper, and can you see the Big Dipper? If you had the ability to see through the Earth, 
you find the Big Dipper below the horizon like this. Now, if your latitude is very close to the equator, you may even find parts of the Little Dipper below the horizon, which will make finding and identifying the Little Dipper and Polaris very difficult. So now that you know how to identify and find both asterisms, let's use them to find true north. If you draw an imaginary line between the two stars that make up the outside edge of the Big Dipper's cup, or bowl, it will pass very near Polaris. They don't line up exactly, but it's close enough to use the two stars in the Big Dipper to readily find Polaris. And you can double check what you think is the star that is Polaris by using its position at the end of the handle of the Little Dipper. When you're sure that's the star you're looking for and it's in the correct position, you've correctly found Polaris or the North Star. Now technically Polaris is not precisely at the North Celestial Pole. The Celestial North Pole is not very far away as shown here in red. This is the point in the sky that if you extend the Earth's axis straight up from the North Pole, you'll be aiming at the sky at the North Celestial Pole. Now you don't have to be 100% accurate on, in locating this imaginary point in the sky. As long as you're near it, you're going to be accurate enough for the purposes of your navigation. Now we're getting close to our goal, finding true north. All you need to do is simply draw an imaginary line straight down from the North Celestial Pole to the horizon. Where this imaginary line reaches the horizon, that is geographic or true north. If you were to travel in a straight line towards this point on the horizon, you will be traveling due north, parallel with all the vertical lines on your topographical maps. And if you were to continue to travel in this direction in a straight line, you would eventually reach the top of the Earth, the North Pole. Now bear in mind, this is not usually where your compass will point, as compasses use the magnetic field of the Earth's iron core, and magnetic north is not the same as true north. Now I have a video on that subject, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. But now you know how to find true north the same way our ancient ancestors did, by using nothing more than their eyes and a keen understanding of the night sky. And there you have it, how to find north without a compass and a flashlight at night. Like I say, maybe you don't have your, your compass, maybe it's broken, maybe you just want to learn a new skill. And hopefully, after you watch this video, you'll take time and actually go out and practice this tonight or tomorrow night or next week, but definitely as soon as you can get out and try this. And again in three months, in six months, and nine months, and so you can see how the, the stars change during the seasons. So, having learned that, this is Backpack Hack. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out on the trail.